Hi, Dr. Laura Perryman in Seattle, Washington here. I want to talk to you about some innovative ways of addressing dry eye disease. My favorite topic. So there's a really interesting set of work being done around Botox or neurotoxins to address the impact of dry eye disease. And this is very, very interesting because it's a it's a double-edged sword. It can help you and it can hurt you depending on where it is applied. We know from the peer-reviewed literature that Botox applied to the crow's feet area is actually uptaken by the lacrimal gland. But it limits your lacrimal gland output. We know that the Schirmer scores are significantly lowered, especially in older patients who get Botox for crow's feet. So if you're gonna get Botox cosmetic, this is a BFZ a Botox-free zone. However, if we give it here, we can have an impact on some of the pain components of dry eye disease. And in the context of superior limbic keratoconjunctivitis, there's some really interesting work being done by Steve Flugfelder and uh, Dr. Gumus, and what they showed was that just the tiniest little bit applied to the pretarsal obicularis can reduce SLK and filamentary keratitis. Almost 90% of patients had a total resolution in their filamentary keratitis with this tiny bit of Botox applied to the pretarsal obicularis of the eyelids. Why would that help? Well, what you're doing is you're reducing the friction between the back surface of the upper lid and the cornea, and that friction is like a peeling type. Uh, response that you see on a on a Christmas sweater, right? Where, where you get those funny little balls all along the sweater. That's essentially what's happening in some dry eye syndromes is you lose your lubricity to the point where there's nothing but friction between the cornea and the lid. And when you reduce that friction component with Botox, there's less rubbing on the cornea. And we think that's the mechanism as to why filamentary keratitis improves. So think hard about Botox. It is a double-edged sword, but if it's done correctly and thoughtfully, it can be helpful to the dry eye patient. I'll bring you more next time.